Hello, I'm Beverly, and I had a near-death experience in 1970. I was a passenger on a motorcycle without a helmet, and we were struck by a drunken driver, and I was thrown headfirst onto the highway. I um, had a fractured skull and numerous broken bones in my head, and I was, I was in a, a, a coma of sorts for the first couple of weeks, and then I was released. I was sent home with nothing for pain. The doctors said anything they would give me would be addictive, and they just sent me home with nothing. And I went back to the place where I was staying. I threw myself down on the bed, and I was in a state of utter despair and in quite a bit of pain. And. Um, I had been an, an atheist at one time, but I, at this point, I consider myself an agnostic, and I said, well, God, if you're up there, this is it. You can have me now, because I can't go on like this. I had the skin ripped off the right side of my face, and I was alone. I was estranged from my family, and I, I, just, I just really didn't want to go on. And with that prayer, I lifted up out of my body, and I felt, I just felt all the pain went away, and I was in this other ethereal body that was uh, perfect, that didn't have a fractured, didn't have the damaged face, the fractured skull. I had been declared legally blind without my glasses um, two years before this, and I could see everything perfectly, and more than we normally can see in every direction. But the most astonishing thing, besides finding out that I was not in that body and I was still alive, I was still, I was still myself, is that there was an angel on the ceiling of this room where I was staying. And this angel was very beautiful and had this glow from within, like a lantern. And he was in these flowing white robes. And I somehow knew him. And he took my hand, such as it was, and we went flying out through the window. And I had no fear. It was like I'd been flying through windows all my life. And so we flew out. I was in Venice Beach at the time, uh, which is near, Los, which is a, a suburb of Los Angeles. And uh, we went out over the ocean and into this area people call a tunnel. And at the time, this was before all the books were written, it looked like a funnel to me. It had a wide opening and a very narrow ending, angled upward and to the right. And so I went into this tunnel with the angel, and it was just like completely leaving the whole space-time continuum that we're in. Um, there was a feeling of there were no distances. There was also a feeling of there not being any time. And I was so alive. I was more alive then than I am here 37 years later, uh, remembering this and recalling the story. And then at some point, the angel was gone, and I emerged from the end of this, this passageway between the worlds. And there before me was this being of light, which had previously appeared as just a little white dot at the end of this tunnel. And so um, this is where it's hard to find words to describe. This, this being um, was all things that ever were, are, or will be. And this being was um, also contained perfect knowledge, how everything works, perfect justice, and compassion. And, and this being, I'll just say he, because we usually use the male pronoun, but this was not, you know, a, a male figure, unlike the angel, was just loving me, just sending this perfect, unconditional love, to knowing me, everything about me, and just loving me just the same. And I thought, well, this isn't the man on top of the Sistine Chapel, but I guess this is, this is God. This is a being that's ineffable, that's omnipresent and omniscient. And um, but I had a few issues with God. 
I, I had been very angry for a long time, and I had a, a lot of questions. And what happened is, I got into this telepathic discussion with a being of light, and um, all of your thoughts go out um, instantly, telepathically, and the answers come back perfectly clearly, more perfect than we can express things in words, because the whole, the, the entire picture is presented in, in, with all of its ramifications. And I also was capable of understanding these things. And so I got all my questions answered and I thought, what I remember is not the answers. I don't know of anyone who's brought back all of the answers. I don't think we're allowed to. But I remember that I knew this. And I said, oh, yes, of course. I already knew that. How could I have ever forgotten? And then I had no more questions because I got it. I got the whole answer, the, the perfect knowledge. It was so simple there. I understood how everything worked. I had this universal knowledge. And then I had a feeling of not even being in a body anymore, just being a unit of consciousness as it is. And the, this being of light took me on a tour of the universe, just at the speed of thought. Einstein's law did not apply there. Um, it was just possible to travel from one celestial object to another. Stars coming into being, stars dying out, uh, all of the all of the beautiful objects, galaxies, comets, planets, all of these things, I just saw them as this beautiful, radiant, alive, and so magnificent. There was no darkness. Nowhere that I looked was there any darkness, like the way we see space. Um, everything was filled with its own internal light. And then we went to this one star that seemed to be at the center of all things. And we went into the center of this star where there was fire all around. But of course I wasn't afraid because I was completely loved and protected. And I wasn't in a body. I, I was um, sort of in the hands of God. And so we went through the center of the star. And at that point, we went into another dimension where there were no more objects at all. There was no more light. There was just the fullness of the presence, of the, of the potential of all the worlds that ever will be created. And it was like going back into what is called the Night of Brahman, the time of being before the creation. And here I just melted into the most perfect unconditional love uh, in a bliss that is beyond words, beyond anything we could ever experience here. And it was like I was in this cosmic ocean and I was a drop in this ocean. And somehow I remembered that I had been Beverly. I had been this girl who said the prayer on that bed. And I wasn't asked because I wouldn't have wanted to return. But I found myself back in that broken body on the bed. But I was never the same. I was completely transformed in every way. I lost the perfect knowledge as we all do, but I know that life continues, that we are loved, and I also had the gift of seeing this love and light all around in everything and everyone. And I believe that is what is really true. Thank you.